Hey, what's up guys? So today we're going to go over CSCS chapter 11. This chapter is on performance enhancing substances and methods. Um, there's a lot of physiology based concepts and definitions in this chapter. So we're going to try to figure out how that relates um, to the questions that you might see on the CSCS exam. Uh, if this is your first time watching one of my lecture videos, I have chapters 1 through now 11 covered on my YouTube channel and it's on CSCS lecture playlist. So be sure to check that out if that sounds like something that's interesting to you. All right, so we'll begin by talking about types of performance enhancing substances. So ergogenic aid, and these are just definitions and we're just going to talk about them briefly. Um, it's just an intro, nothing to focus too much on. But like I was saying, ergogenic aid is any substance, mechanical aid, or a training method that could enhance your performance. And this is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's lecture. Um, dietary supplements, not to be confused with ergogenic aids. Um, dietary supplements are highly refined products that won't be confused with food. So if you look at this um, little chart here, it shows you some examples of dietary supplements uh, be sure to kind of read through them and then moving on to the next slide here which is more important uh, we'll be talking about hormones right so different kinds of hormones here uh, testosterone is the primary androgen hormone that interacts with our skeletal muscle um, you might be familiar with testosterone already um, erythropoietin is secreted by our kidneys and they elevate hematocrit uh, which is the amount of red blood cells in our entire um, blood. And there's also hemoglobin, which is the protein that carries around oxygen in our blood. There's catecholamines, um, which is basically the same thing as adrenaline. Um, and then there's anabolic steroids, which are synthetic derivatives of male sex hormone, which is also known as the testosterone. All right? So this talks about dosing. Whoops dosing and efficacy there's two different methods of dosing um, these hormones so stacking is one of them stacking is using several different drugs um, simultaneously so they're administered administered simultaneously and that increases the potency of each drug um, the, there's also pyramid um, type of dosing where you increase the dosage of that one drug slowly over time. Now let's talk about efficacy. What are the pros? What can be the advantages of using these types of hormones or even illegal drugs? Um, well, you can increase the muscle mass and strength by increasing the volume of that muscle. And then you can also seek some psychological effects like changes in arousal and aggression, which is... Um, something that you can benefit off of illegally um, if you do end up using illegal substances um, in sporting events. And then there's also athletic performances um, that can be changed due to hormonal changes in our body. All right, moving on to now the adverse effects. What can go wrong, right? Well, signs and symptoms of orgogenic aid abuse um, many systems in our body can be affected. So cardiovascular, endocrine, um, your G, GU, GI, dermatological, hepatic, MSK, musculoskeletal, psychological. Just be sure to kind of read over them because they might show up on your test. But I'm not going to go and spend too much time going through each of these adverse effects. But there's a table for you if you want to read through them. All right, so hormones continued. Um, insulin, you might be familiar with insulin already as well. It's secreted by the pancreas in response to increased blood glu glucose levels, but it also increases protein synthesis and suppresses um, muscle protein breakdown via anti-catabolic effect of insulin. So insulin is an anabolic hormone. I think we talked about this briefly in previous lectures. Um, catabolic versus anabolic. Anabolic is a hormone that helps build stuff up versus catabolic helps break stuff down, right? So insulin is an anabolic hormone, if you were to categorize it that way. There's also human growth hormone, which maintains the blood glucose level. 
Um, it also increases lean body tissue while decreasing the body fat, right? So an adverse effect that you might see from using too much human growth hormone is acromegaly, which basically means um, overgrowth, right? In certain joints or parts of the body. And then there's beta adrenergic agonists, and these are substances related to epinephrine, um, which is also known as adrenaline. Um, some of the things that could work with using beta adrenergic agonists are lipolysis, which is breakdown of fat, and thermogenesis, which is increasing that energy expenditure and thereby producing more heat from your body. And then there's beta blockers. Um, this prevents catecholamines from binding, so it helps reduce anxiety and stress. Basically, um, it prevents all the SNS or sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system activities from happening too much. So it kind of calms you down. All right, now let's talk about dietary supplements. Um, we need to talk about essential amino acids, EAA, and branched chain amino acids such as isoleucine, leucine, and valine. We talked about leucine in previous chapter, one of the most important amino acids that make up our protein. Um, these guys are not produced in our body, so you must ingest them through food, right? Or other sources of um, diet, like your protein shakes, for example. Um, arginine is required for synthesis of protein and creatinine creatine, um, and it's able to elevate nitric oxide level so I'm just gonna go over these different substances here arginine and then uh, there is a long name for this one we just call it HMB it suppresses muscle damage and muscle protein breakdown um, just when we're going over these try to think about how they can relate to um, muscular performances and in sporting events, right? What do they, what role do they play in either um, preventing protein breakdown or, you know, like arginine, um, synthesizing protein and creatine, right? Um, and then there's the nutritional muscle buffers that regulates um, hydrogen ion concentration of skeletal muscle during high intensity exercise everything really comes down to these buffers and increasing decreasing maintaining the ph levels in our body and how that um, plays a factor in how our skeletal muscles function right so here are here are all the nutritional muscle buffers um, beta alanine beneficial in aerobic sports but not so much in helping increase max strength right Sodium bicarbonate, you might have heard of this one already. Um, it increases the pH of blood, making it more basic. And then there's sodium citrate, which also increases the pH. And then there's L-carnitin. Um, it transports fatty acid from cytosol to mitochondria um, to be oxidized as an energy source or to be used as an energy source. All right. So last slide, this is a short chapter. Um, we'll go over creatine and other stimulants. So creatine helps supply energy to all cells of the body. This is such a well-researched, well-known um, supplement, dietary supplement, creatine, um, in bodybuilding community, in the sports community, right? So we're gonna pay a little more attention to this and go over this in a little more detail. So, like I said, helps supply energy to all cells of the body. It's synthesized in liver, kidneys, and pancreas, actually. Um, and 98% of it is stored in skeletal muscles, where it'll be used during those performance or those competitions. Um, it's involved in ATP formation, so it is used in creating energy and utilizing that energy. And it also could possibly increase the body weight because it is involved in body mass changes as well. Um, now we talk about stimulants. Um, caffeine can increase fat oxidation, uh, which just means um, it helps utilize fat as an energy source through mobilization of free fatty acids. Aerobic athletes are more likely to benefit from caffeine 
because it prolongs aerobic endurance exercises. And then ephedrine is a basically a beta agonist. Um, it, it's a temporary relief from symptoms of bronchial asthma. Um, basically opens up the airway a little bit um, to give you some space to breathe better. So like I said, short chapter, that is it for chapter 11. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer them and I'll see you guys next time.